questions, last class period in your notes, Jacob. All you simply do is work from the inside out. So the first thing we want to do is find sine inverse of 1 half. Again, a lot of you are still kind of questioning what exactly is the sine inverse? What exactly is that representing? Well, to go back to that, again, if we have sine of theta is equal to 1 half, this is what we call a trigonometric equation. This is saying the sine of some angle is equal to 1 half. There's actually ones to be organized to the left here. Yeah, you get a. So the sine of some angle equals 1 half. To find that angle, we need to have that angle isolated. The only way to isolate it is to undo sine. The only way to undo sine is to take the sine inverse on both sides. When solving this equation, the sine inverse of sine is going to leave us with theta equals sine inverse of 1 half. So when I ask, so when you look at this and you see sine inverse of 1 half, if you're looking to evaluate that, what exactly are you doing? You're finding the angle that produces the um, 1 half for sine. Does that make sense? The sine inverse of 1 half is e the value of that is, e is your angle. So the best way we can do that is really saying what angle produces, um, what angle, when you take the sine of it, produces 1 half? Yes? Sine to mega first is also arc sine. Arc sine is the same thing as sine inverse, absolutely. Yep. So we go back and we look at that. And well, let's look at the first quadrant. You could look at 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 90 triangles. But in that first quadrant, that's all I did was redraw the triangles anyway. So it's the same thing there. So let's go and take a look at it. Um, do you guys see where the y coordinate is 1 half? There's only one triangle that produces that. Huh? The green triangle. So therefore, the angle of that green triangle is 30. The sine of your 30, 60, 30, 60, 90 triangle of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. What is the opposite side of that green triangle? 1 half. What is the y coordinate of the coordinate point on the unit circle? 1 half. So the angle that produces 1 half when you take the sine of it is 30 degrees, or pi over 6. Okay. Now the other thing that's really important, though, whenever you're taking the inverse, remember there's a restriction. right? The angle of the domain of your previous function has to be between negative pi halves and pi halves. Is pi over 6 between negative pi halves and pi halves? The best way I like to do that, guys, is give you a visual representation. The restriction is between negative pi halves and pi halves. Is pi over 6 within that range? Yes. So good. OK. So now we do cosine of pi over 6. Right? So we figured out the sine inverse of 1 half is pi over 6. Now we just need to figure out what is the cosine of pi over 6. So we go ahead and look on the unit circle again and say, all right, where's pi over 6? Cosine represents the x value. So what is the x value? What is the x value of your cosine? What is cosine of 30 degrees, guys? Just look at a unit, just look at a triangle. What? Take a look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If that's 30 degrees, if you know, if that's 30 degrees, that is the hypotenuse, that is the short leg, that's the square root of 3 over 2. Right? This is just like we've done before. This is nothing new. The cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse, which was represented as a coordinate point as your x value of your coordinate point. So it is square root of 3 over 2. Okay? I am really, really.